a proverb can be spoken in a few seconds. But its benefit comes from thinking about it and working through what it's saying. And so that's what we're seeking to do as we read Proverbs verse by verse. Today we're looking at Proverbs chapter 22, verse 8. He who sows iniquity will reap sorrow, and the rod of his anger will fail. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share a few thoughts and meditate on this proverb. In fact, this chapter of Proverbs has much food for thought, many verses that are worth pondering on and seeing how they apply to our lives. And a strong theme in them so far has been the idea of riches, that God makes the rich and the poor. That is, it's not wrong to be rich, and it's not wrong to be poor. And in fact, it's not better to be rich, and it's not better to be poor. But they are circumstances in which people have to live their lives. If we are rich, it's what we do with our riches. If we are poor, it is how we serve those who we serve. For the previous verse says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. The poor person is restricted in the things that he can do. But the manner in which he does what he does is the critical thing. And that is evident in the advice given to the rich and the poor by the Apostle Paul. But his own example, and that of the Lord Jesus, was that he learned in whatever state he was in to be content. If we have food and clothing, with these we shall be content. We don't need the Lamborghini or the Ferrari, but we do need food and shelter. Today's proverb then, He who sows iniquity will reap sorrow, and the right of his anger will fail. There are those who seek wealth and riches, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, rather than seeking God and his righteousness. God gives riches and power, honour and life to those who walk humbly, who submit themselves to the will of God, and walk in the fear of the Lord. But he who sows iniquity is obviously a person who is not walking in the fear of the Lord, is not walking humbly with God, but is trying to make his own way, take a path which is not the path laid out by God. And you invest time in friendships or whatever, but because these are outside of the will of God, they are not going to be blessed by God. And our proverb says, and they will just bring sorrow. Those who live their lives outside of the guidelines given by God himself suffer the consequences of them because what you sow, you shall also reap. Paul emphasizes this in Galatians. He says, God is not mocked. Those who sow to the flesh will reap corruption. Those who sow to the spirit reap life. Now, when you're seeking earthly goals and you're using earthly means to get them, then you will attempt to use intimidation to get people to cooperate with you, to give you things. But that also will fail. That's what the second part of this couplet says. The rod of his anger will fail. You can get as angry as you like, but it will not make things work out the way you want them to work out. But when you see a person yelling and screaming and demanding, then you know that they are not walking in the way of God. The New Testament says, Be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. There is a place for anger. The Lord Jesus was very angry when he came in to the temple to present himself as the Messiah and he found everyone so preoccupied with buying and selling. And he made a whip of cords and drove them out and he wouldn't let them even walk through the compound as a shortcut. No, if they were coming to the temple, it should be to worship God. For this, my father's house is a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. He was angry, but he did not sin in that anger. He wasn't himself 
he was angry for. It was because God, his father, was dishonoured by these people who claimed to be honouring God. But if we use our anger to intimidate others for our own advantage, then ultimately that will fail. We will not find joy. We'll just find frustration and not achieve the end that we're looking for. And that's the way of life for some people, that they raise their voice to get attention. They threaten to coerce people to do what they want them to. But those who know their God will not be intimidated. They will walk in integrity and do that which is right before God and trust that God will work it out. So when the apostles first started declaring the resurrection of Jesus Christ and that he is Lord of all, the authorities came down very heavily saying, you shall not speak any more in, in this name. But they quietly responded, we must obey God rather than men. Jesus has told us to go into the whole world and declare this message. And it is that specific obligation that we have which we are seeking to fulfill. So you can put us in jail, you can beat us, you can execute us, but we must obey God rather than men. Satan uses fear to intimidate people, the fear of death particularly, and so he threatens to take our lives. But the Lord Jesus was not intimidated by death. And when we know that Jesus has risen from the dead, then we know that we also will rise. So it doesn't matter if our life is taken and the body is designed in such a way that there's only a certain amount of pain that it can feel and that is for its good. Beyond that, it begins to shut down. So the anger of the wicked will fail in its attempt to destroy the servants of God and the work of God. He who sows iniquity will reap sorrow. For what you sow, so shall you reap. My wife likes to maintain her garden and she is very quick to get rid of the weeds that turn up. She is concerned to have the plants that cooperate together that make the garden beautiful. But it all requires effort and patience. It takes time for seeds to grow. The application of this proverb for us is a warning that we walk in ways of righteousness, that we keep our garden clean of iniquity, that it might bear fruit that is good to eat. For this is God's great desire. And as Jesus spoke with his disciples on the night he was crucified, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. That means living a life of service for others, of concern for others, being content with the things that we have, and fulfilling that commandment by which we show our love for God by the love we have for our neighbour. He who sows iniquity will reap sorrow, and the rod of his anger will fail. One final thought. There is a period of time between sowing and reaping. When you sow something, you have expectations of what you will reap, but you must wait. If you sow iniquity, then you reap sorrow. But the sorrow may not be immediate. The ultimate sorrow is to be cast out of the Father's presence for eternity to the place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, great sorrow and tears. When you know that you could have been in the Father's house, where there will be no more death or sorrow or tears, as you sow, so shall you reap.
rape.